Hello, hello, and welcome to Focus with Angela Duncan, where we focus on growing deeper in our walks with the Lord by focusing on God's love, God's heart, and the truth of his word. I'm your host, Angela Duncan. Thank you to all our listeners who tune in each week on Fishbowl Radio Network, the number one internet radio station. We have listeners tuning in globally each week, so thank you to our international listeners. Last week's top 10 countries were the United States, India, Canada, United Kingdom, Spain, Africa, Peru, Mexico, Indonesia, and Germany. Shout out. You can find me on Facebook under the group name Focus with Angela Duncan or on podcasts under Focus with Angela Duncan as well. Please go and subscribe. Our goal at Focused is to uplift, encourage, and inspire you by providing you with Christ-centered content each week that is authentic, informative, and relevant. Well, today is Testimony Tuesday. You know I love Testimony Tuesday where we get to hear how the power of God has invaded different people's lives. And he is so powerful. My guests today are married couple Cameron and Crystal is it Grist or Grist? It's Grist. Grist. Actually. I should have got that uh, straight before I got on live. Grist is what I was okay. saying in my head. So I was actually right. But then when I got ready to read, I'm like, is it Grist? Is that a, look, is that a short eye or a long eye? I, I always say it's close to Christ. Oh, y'all. that's good. <laughs> Who we follow. That is so good. That is awesome. They are both in ministry. Cameron is a musician and Christian rapper. His goal in creating music is to save the souls of the lost. Yes, Crystal Grist has a ministry called Dunamis Power in Action for Victory Release Ministries. It's based on Acts 1 8 and also Help Make a Med Foundation, which are both nonprofit organizations. She is also studying to become a pediatric cardiovascular trauma surgeon. Wow. Today they are here to share their testimony and passion for the kingdom. Later on in the show, we also have a special treat as Cameron is going to display his rapping skills for us. We don't get to hear him rap about Jesus. Please welcome Cameron and Crystal to the show. Thank you so much for having us. It's an honor to be here. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys? We're great. I am so glad to have you here. One of the things that I love about my show that I love about my show and the reason that I wanted to do it and that I when I pitched it was I wanted to highlight people that were bringing the kingdom of the Lord from heaven to earth Mm -hmm. it talks about you know let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and one of the ways we do that is through us Mm -hmm. by being the hands and feet of Jesus by representing him in everything that we do so when I find people that are on fire for the Lord and then just love serving Christ I get excited and there's all kinds of ways we hear a lot of things um in the news that's negative we hear a lot of things that you know everybody's going doing dark things no there's a lot of people that are walking and doing things for the kingdom and so my show I love to highlight that because we see all the negativity but there are people all around that are doing great things for the kingdom so I'm excited to have you guys here so let's just get started. You guys are newlyweds. Yes, yes. ma'am, we Ooh, are. <laughs> I, I remember those days of being a newlywed. That's why y'all just, gee, 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 you just smiling. You gonna keep the smile. I'm messing with you. You gonna keep the smile. The time so, flies by. Right, it does. It yeah. does. So let's talk about. But y'all have an interesting testimony. That's part of your testimony. Talk about the way that you guys met. Okay, you were, sure, no problem. You look oh, at me. So okay. sweet. They're, they're looking at each other like, do you want to say it? Do you want to say it? I it. love it. Well, Mrs. Grice, I guess, will do the talking right now, man. <laughs> but, but, yeah, me and Cam actually met um, by way of his mother. I was actually serving at a church in Arlington uh, a couple of years ago back. That was around um, 2017. Okay. Yeah, 2016. Yeah, around 20. I said around between 2016 and 2017. Yeah, around there. Yeah. Time's going so fast. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. Uh, but, yeah, around that time, I actually met his mother, um, and I remember serving with her. We were greeting at the mm-hmm. church house. It was my first time greeting for, for that night. I, I've done every other ministry at the church from the youth ministry to prison ministry, you name it. I was in it, oh. and I was just serving God. And she, I remember one time I was, just, I, was, I was just talking to her at that one present time, and I was just saying, so I, I said, Miss uh, Mother Deborah, you all right? Because she looked at me mm-hmm. in, a, in a way where they, she, like she saw a ghost, and she said, no, I'm fine. You remind me of my son. She wow. kept saying it over 
and over again. And then later she uh, made sure that we connected at that time after that. Awesome. Like, like, like I tell all women of uh, faith, I say, you know, we just, you just want to continue to glean for God. You never know, Boaz may be watching, but instead of my husband watching, it was Boaz executive, Boaz mama was watching. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, Boaz mother. <laughs> you cannot go wrong if the mother likes you. That's what I say. If, you, if the mama likes you, praise him. And the Amen. fact that she introduced you guys is amazing. Amen. So is there anything, when you met her, were you just like, yeah, mama, you, you did it right. You, you hit it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it. It took a couple of dates because like, you know, the long distance. You know, yeah. Y'all yeah, were long distance. Slowly but surely, you know, God revealed to me as well. That's so awesome. The rest, is, the rest is history. So. That's so awesome. And I and the reason I wanted to start there is because there's a lot of people that are believing God for marriage. They're believing mm-hmm. God for a godly spouse. And I tell people all the time, I know it may look like there's no one there that, oh, my gosh, everybody's out here do, living for themselves or got mm-hmm. five kids and, ten, you know, baby mamas or whatever. Mm-hmm. But there are people that, that God has kept them in the cleft of a rock for you. You know what I'm saying? Or just that that person that, you know, God, we don't give, you know, anyways, I could go into a whole sermon about that. But Come my on. point being <laughs> that there is someone, you know, if you trust God, I believe he'll bring them to you. And so it's exciting. It's 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 funner to do marriage together and to do do life together with someone that you know is kingdom equipped Most to definitely. that it's a because that's what it's about Amen. we don't give in marriage in heaven so the right. marriage is an earthly institution and so because Amen. of that okay god why do you have us in marriage then right. it's kingdom Amen. so you want to find someone who's kingdom that's another shout out i know i say that all the time but i'm gonna say that again because you don't want to just looks will fade mm-hmm. yep uh, mm-hmm. they'll start getting on your so nerves, true, you know, right? thing, life will come. You've got to have someone that has the same godly principles as Absolutely. you, that when the times come, they stick with you yes, ma'am. closer than a brother. So, yeah. so true. Absolutely. I'm glad that you guys are doing well and that yeah. you're enjoying marriage. Whoever says it's not a good thing, they lied. You know, you just, <laughs> yeah, but you have to be, you have to be mindful of who, mm. you know, either finds a wife, gives a thing, good thing. And we That's choose true. and you have to be mindful of who you choose. Amen. I mean, it is an important choice. Mm-hmm. So, yes. you know, a lot of times I just think we go into it way too lightly. I don't know where that came from, but praise him. <laughs> I said in your bio <laughs> that both of you are in ministry, and I love it. Let's talk about how that came to be. How did each of you, first, let's talk about how you came to know the Lord, and then kind of like where the ministry came out of that. Okay. I'll let you go first. You let me go first okay. again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> first, you know. No problem. And one thing I want to say, too, to add on what you said last, if that's okay, Miss Angela. Yes, of course. I feel like when it comes to seeking out the desire for a spouse, a lot of times people are seeking the position of a spouse, but they forget their position in kingdom. Mm-hmm. So if we can be reminded that our position in kingdom is a greater value before you get the spouse, mm. then maybe you can meet your Boaz. And a lot of times people don't meet Boaz because they're not busy gleaning like Ruth. They're busy yeah. getting distracted, like your show is called Focus. Mm-hmm. If we can have laser focus, mm-hmm. then maybe we can find exactly what God wants us to have That's without true. searching. Yeah. It will land in your lap. It land in my lap. I was just busy serving God. That's and Cameron sick. land in my lap That's while serving God. That's good. So, But you asked, how did I I get to know the Lord. Actually, I was five years old mm-hmm. uh, when I actually got saved. I said my little baptism certificate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep it hey. in my little in my little box. That's awesome. Because it's just important as my birth certificate. Absolutely, because absolutely. It holds a greater weight. The you know the moment you come to Christ and you get to know Christ and you ask Him in your heart, that holds the greatest weight, more weight than you coming into this world. Mm-hmm. So I I feel like that is really treasurable to me. Mm-hmm. But I was five. I remember asking my mom, I said, Mom, I want I'm ready to be saved. She's like, you know, she was shocked because I'm only five years old, you know, uh, literally wanting Jesus in my life. Yeah. Uh, and she she led me through the Lord's the Lord's prayer. And then Beautiful. and then years as the time went on, I was always known as a church girl in school. And people see me from high school and they were like, Crystal, you haven't changed. You got that right because my God is unchanging. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when you got saved, you stuck with it. Yes, ma'am. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, people will start off as a a young person. Things of life will come. They'll fall away. I I went through that. I kind of fell away. Always was saved. Always knew that I was set apart. Always Mm. knew that I was different. Always knew that this, even when I tried to dip, that that wasn't the will of the Lord Mm. for me. But, I mean, a lot of times, sometimes people 
you know, fall away. And so I love what I love about your testimony is that you stayed with God. Amen. You got to know him and you Thank stayed you with him. So many people don't do that. Mm. They go and kind of dip into the world and test a little bit and get a little temptation and things and then come back mm. when have to, and have to get delivered all over again. Um, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We have to come back and get deliverance because we didn't oh, stay with it. Man. But what a blessing that you stayed with it. What about you, Cameron? Mm. Yes. Well, um, I came to the Lord myself when I was a little bit older. Okay. I was, I was 17. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Cornerstone Baptist, shout out to them. <laughs> I don't important. know which camera to look at. But <laughs> yeah, straight ahead. It's, it's important. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So uh, I responded to altar call. You know, I was going to Cornerstone ever mm-hmm. since my 04, 05. Mm-hmm. You know, shortly after me and my family, like, you know, we moved here. Uh, you know, we were going to that church for a while. Yeah. And uh, altar call, you know, I'll never forget. It was October 2007. Uh, it just spoke to me. You know, mm-hmm. that sermon. And then when he put his, his hand up, you know, I just... I responded. You yeah. Know? I responded because the it was the word of God that came forth. Yeah. To my heart. Yeah. You know, to to get to get me to want to change. Mm-hmm. So that was the starting point. Awesome. And, uh, ever since then, it's just been you know. And from that, you guys have both now, after walking with the Lord, and you've you know come to know the Lord seventeen five, you are now in ministry. So let's talk mm-hmm. about. I want to definitely highlight that because you are doing things, your hands and feet, you're doing mm-hmm. things for the kingdom. Uh, Crystal, tell us about yours. Let me make sure I say it right again. You okay? <laughs> Dunamis Power in Action for Victory Release Ministries. Yes, ma'am. And it's based on Acts 1 8. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I would like to start with Acts 1 8. Uh, Acts 1 8 declares, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all in Judea and Samaria and unto. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. That's mm-hmm. King James Version. Okay. God is so good. Yes, <laughs> I've got to say that. I yes, mean, Yahweh, is. Jireh, God who provides, yes. is a good God. Mm-hmm. Uh, my brother, Prophet Phineas II, he went on to be with the Lord um, uh, back in 2014. I'm trying to think about it too much because I get emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, now I don't want to get emotional. But Second, one thing I am grateful for when it comes to my brother's life. He was active doing God's work. Mm-hmm. Before he went on to be with the Lord at 29, he, he had passed in a tragic car accident. Before oh, he went wow. to be with the Lord, wife of 10 years, two beautiful children, mm-hmm. children still in God, and I pray, mm-hmm. I thank God for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember him talking about, you know, you got to be busy about, about kingdom business, mm-hmm. kingdom mm-hmm. business. And after he had passed, I said, it's time. It's time. And I literally went to go. I said, Mom, I got I to gotta go start this ministry I know it's time for me, and I feel like he passed the baton to me mm. when uh, God called him home back in May 17th of 2014. Mm. That was literally the day after I graduated college. Mm-hmm. He was uh, he, he was pronounced uh, dead on arrival at that time. Wow. Um, so to me, my greatest impact and push for ministry, I would say, would be my chain breaker, my brother, Prophet mm-hmm. Phineas II, mm-hmm. pushing me to do kingdom's business. And I knew I had a calling mm-hmm. to do full-time ministry. I was at a Benny Inn service, and they said, anyone who has a calling, you know God's calling. God's been calling me for a while. <laughs> and I, I have, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I've had uh, prophetic giftings uh, since I was a child. I can have visions still do to this day. And um, the Lord, yeah, the Lord told me it was time, mm-hmm. and I, I went about, I went about doing that. Got my business, uh, well, I won't say business, but nonprofit uh, ministry name uh-huh. registered. Gotcha. With, yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. All right, what about you, Cameron? Well, um, so the the music app, the mm-hmm. music app is one thing I did mention in the bio. Um, it's been a long time coming. You know, that really started. I want to say last year. Okay, last year. so you actually have a music app. Yes. <laughs> Which so it actually go ahead tell me it you can stream <laughs> uh, yeah i was trying to man when i saw it i was like is this really an app yes it is by the grace of god you know by you the grace developed god, an good. app by the grace of god and with the help of you know a few of my friends yeah yes. <laughs> so, so what do you stream on there is it just your music or is it all christian music or no, different it's things my, it's, it's my music exclusively. Oh, okay it's exclusively so, your music but yes, it's an man. app so they can you can download it and just listen to your music, right? And um, you know, unlike uh, you know any streaming services out there, it it is a uh, it's not a subscription service. Okay, you, you literally pay one dollar and you have like access to ten songs. You know, you can gotcha. stream albums worth of songs. You know, which I thought was a really good you know marketing. Point. Yeah. Um, but also the inspiration just came. You know, because it came at a time to where 
it was around the time COVID and mm-hmm. first got here. So I was on paid leave from the job that I was working at the time right. for about two months. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I really just made Had a time. great investment. Yeah. Invested that first stimulus, and I was like, let's let's go because it's, it's time. Entrepreneurship. Awesome. So, so many things. You know, yeah. Just, as, as the Lord gave me inspiration. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. what else? So then, you, so you started the app. Yes, ma'am. You have songs on there because you're you're a rapper. You're Christian the musician is your stage name. Is that yes, correct? Ma'am. And you rap. Yes, ma'am. And then yes, what ma'am. else? Like do because I know you do shows. Tell yes. us about how you. Why did you go from? What made you start? Is that something you've always wanted to do? Let me say it like that: rapping and things like that. So absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us yes, about ma'am. it. Yes, ma'am. I fell in love with hip hop when I was. I want to say my earliest memories. Probably like kindergarten to first grade. Wow. I heard uh, De La Souls, I mean, myself and I, for the yeah. first time. And ever since yeah. then, I was just floored. Wow. And I just, you know. Yeah. It spoke to me. You know? Wow. And, and I've always loved hip hop, you know. Um, but like, I love hip hop. I love Jesus. So it's like, it's merging the Meshing two. Meshing the two. Yeah, yes, definitely. And there's such a need for godly music. Amen. Uh, Amen. I just took my children this past weekend to, I was telling you guys, a Toby Mac concert. It was Toby Mac oh. and Torin Wells and wow. a whole bunch of people. But um, it was so awesome to be able to be in that concert environment, right. to have the things that we were, you know, we're accustomed to in the in the secular arena you know, with the pyrotechnics and the lights and all mm. that. But they, we were worshiping God. Wow. I mean, you would look around and I have videos where people's hands are just up and they're worshiping God. And wow. my kids got a chance to witness that, and they loved it. They were like, oh. man, they were standing there singing the songs out, speak life, speak life. You know, <laughs> yeah. we're not singing about other stuff. Right, and right, so right. there's a need for that. I mean, it ain't like, I mean, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're believers, but we still want to have fun. Right. You know what I'm saying? We still want to enjoy life. And so that was an opportunity for them to go somewhere and still have fun, but have fun worshiping God and giving mm-hmm. him glory. So it's, it's, that's awesome to me because Typically, when you think of hip hop or you think of rap, yes. you know, you think the negative. Typically. And so, go ahead. No, I was just going to say typically. And that's yeah. the thing. I think we just desperately need another perspective. Absolutely. And that's really like what I want to bring to the table. I love it. Mm. I love it. My kids love, do you know KB? Yes. Um, he always takes, fan. He's. A, I am too. Yes. He <laughs> takes a lot of the worship songs and makes them into the rap songs. You right. know, he has one with Oceans and yes. 10,000 Reasons. I love that song. We yes, love it because we have an opportunity to worship. We're singing the song. My kids, oh. I mean, you know, they want to they wanna hear that. And yeah. there's, you know, those beats and stuff, amazing. Right, right. But he's talking about Jesus, you right. know. And so <laughs> I love that I have that to pull from. But they don't just have to, you know, because music is beautiful. Music is God given. He is the melody of our soul. You know what I'm saying? And so to have that and to have an option that's outside of hearing the things that are, you know, there nowadays. And like you said, anything, anybody that's been in the business, I actually had a lady on a couple of um, months ago and she used to be in the business. And she'll tell you, she was like, man. The things that she that went on behind mm-hmm. the scenes, she was like, I had to get out, wow. and so it is a business, it is an industry, and mm-hmm. there are things that are attached to that that are not for the glory of God. And so, like you said, being able to go out on your own, Amen. you're able to do that. Amen. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Wow. So, is that what that what do you see yourself like doing with that? Do you see just releasing CDs and doing tours, and you want to do all that eventually? <laughs> Well, yes, ma'am. I mean, it's it's a launching pad, you know, until yeah. uh, the team gets in place, until things, um, you know, because things come in waves. Yeah. You know, and God, he gives to, to whom whom is ready. Yeah. So I believe that's how things will, will turn out, and it'll just get bigger and better and bigger mm-hmm. and better. And the, and the bigger it becomes, the more the budget is. You know? Yeah. So it's like, okay, now I'm able to hire a publicist. Now I'm able wow. to hire um, a business manager. Yeah, and yeah. So I, I know, like, in time, you know, those things will come. Awesome. So, so did you, when did you realize you could rap? Oh, man. Because that's not easy. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not. not. It, it's really not. I it's, try to just free flow sometimes, being funny. And, I mean, it sounds horrible. <laughs> I'm like, I know I can rhyme. I mean, you know, but it just, yeah. Yes. So when did you realize you had that, that gift? Because I started writing poetry at like 15, so okay. I would say like around that same Okay, time. that's interesting. So you started off with poetry. We started out doing spoken word. I performed at venues. Uh, the first 
which I, I remember to this day, I was maybe 17, 18 at the time. Okay. I was at uh, Mocha Locks Coffee, which is now defunct. Yes, but, I remember that. Yes, yeah. Yes, ma'am. So they had open mic nights. Mm-hmm. So I would go out there, you know, rock the stage after um, my, my friend uh, Bara. Shout out Bara. You know who you are. <laughs> uh, she, had, you know, just gave me, like, encouragement. Yeah. You know, because I shared with her my, my earliest offerings mm-hmm. of poetry. And, you know, she really just... You know, like like go to me on. It's like you you need to like perform mm-hmm. this. This is really good. Mm-hmm. At the time, I was like seventeen, eighteen. I didn't think much of it, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, I I lacked confidence back then. Yeah. But that's when I knew I had something. So even though I wasn't really rapping per se, mm-hmm. there were still raps because I would I would rhyme in my poetry. Gotcha. All the time, it just it was like second nature to me. Yeah. I just felt like it had to rhyme. So yeah. Essentially, those were raps that I was writing it. And didn't you know. yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I find that a lot of rappers are poets because it's true. They're lyrically, I mean it's right, right. it goes together. Right. You know what's so interesting when we when we talk about this in purpose and ministry, I always say this and I said this at the networking thing that I met you guys mm-hmm. out that it's so look at the giftings that God's given you. Look at mm-hmm. the passions that you have. Mm-hmm. Like when you're like, What am I called to do? How can I affect your kingdom, Lord? Mm-hmm. Look at what He's placed in you. Mm-hmm. You liked rap from a young age. You were saved at a young age and always, you know, knew that you had a gifting and saw visions. God was placing that in you at a young age. He doesn't just do that for happenstance. Mm-hmm. It's because it's something we're gonna walk in that we're going to eventually, you know what I'm saying, do. So the mm-hmm. fact that even then you were in love with hip hop and now you, but you're using it. Right. It doesn't mean just because God's given you something, you have to take it and go do it the world's way. Right. He is, we we're unique. He's looking for us to True. do it differently and to yes. do it to affect kingdom. So that's so awesome. Yeah. Crystal, tell me about your ministry. Now I know sure. that I've seen some of your, um, I went back and watched some of your, you do the daily messages and yes, you I do. share some I things. Do a as, whole lot of yeah, them. <laughs> exactly. How did the Lord, why did you start your broadcast? Why did you feel the need to do that? I feel like there is a lack of, I cannot say this, of, of, of kingdom education. Mm-hmm. Remember I said business? I guess I was quick to say business, but I said ministry because we should be about kingdom business. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we're so busy doing, I, I can actually say this, a lot of times we're so busy doing everything else, we don't even realize we're not being productive. That's and we good. think. We think, oh, I'm busy, so I'm being productive. But mm-hmm. how much progression have you made while being busy? That's good. <laughs> and yeah. you think about conversations you're supposed to have with mama or, your, your, you know, mm-hmm. your mother, your sister, mm-hmm. your brother, your father. Mm-hmm. You know, you, and you think about, okay, I've been busy, but I haven't, have I been managing well? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I feel like God has put me in a place to make sure that I manage well in a manner that I am speaking when he I've been spoken to by him. Mm. <laughs> and oftentimes we want to speak ahead or out of turn. Mm-hmm. I don't want to speak out of turn. So that's why you may see it seems sporadic mm-hmm. because I only speak when God tells me to speak. Gotcha. And I am silent when he tells me to be silent. Mm-hmm. I don't want to move ahead of God. So what I do is I post things on my page that God tells me to. Mm-hmm. And I call them Dunamis Power Thinking Lessons. Mm-hmm. I want to get you to think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because once I plant the right seed, I'm, I, I expect to see harvest on Right, it. <laughs> right. So you that's how God. I came to do that. Gotcha. And so basically it's what it, whenever you're in your prayer time or whatever the Lord just oh, kind of comes at me and you're studying whatever he kind of releases for you to say. Absolutely. I love it. And something you said when you said about the busyness. Mm-hmm. Satan don't mind if we're busy. Mm. You don't even mind if we're busy doing, if you will, good things in the house of the Lord. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because if we're busy and we're just doing things, but that don't have an impact mm. that aren't in our lane, mm-hmm. you know, we're supposed to be running the the, the race that's, that's set right. before that's us. Right. You know what I mean? And if we're just doing stuff, he don't care about that. Like there's a lot of people. One of the things that somebody told me that was a great piece of wisdom. They said, when you get into ministry, or if you start doing things for the kingdom, make sure you never lose your quiet time and your one-on-one with the Lord this is very true. because you don't ever want to get so busy doing things mm-hmm. for the kingdom mm-hmm. that you forget that your first love. And mm-hmm. so what I'm saying is not saying that those things aren't good, oh, but when we get too busy mm-hmm. and we start doing things just to sometimes make a name for ourselves or just mm-hmm. have more followers, you know, that's the big thing now, you know, mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that in the right way. Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm saying? When I get people exactly just get so busy from. and they're just trying to build their thing, yeah. you can lose Go ahead. You know where they go wrong at. They're, the reason why you can lose so much, if I can complete your sentence in that. Please in, do. In, in, in the right term. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of times people are, like you say, are, are building something for themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why it's like King Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was so bu busy building mm -hmm. statues and mm -hmm. things for mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. Wanted people to bow down to him yeah. as if he created them. But right. he mm -hmm. has the creator the answer to just like you, which is the same creator as mine. Mm -hmm. So we have to watch what we're building outside of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. anything outside of God should fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're building in kingdom, only what you do for, for Christ, Christ will last. last. And on. the type of legacy I want to have is kingdom legacy. That's My it. brother always said, Prophet Finney, mm -hmm. is the one I was telling you a mm -hmm. second, it's not about making a name for yourself. Yeah. But I add this sentiment. It's about making Yahweh El Kabor's yes. name, God who's chief and commander known. That's what it's about. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do what you were famous for. Hmm. Torn well sung that. He was like, shut the mouths of lion, bring dry bones to life. Carabos. Do what you hmm. are famous for. God is, it's all about him. Amen. That's why we're here, you know? Mm. Um, so let's talk about the fact that you are also studying. So we do ministry, but you're also studying to become a yes. pediatric surgeon. Yes, ma'am. That has been Woo. the heart desire since I was Tell three years old. Tell us about, are you in school currently? Actually, I'm planning on going back. So I, I just finished a, actually a certification for a medical program. But uh -huh. I plan on going back to get my, it's called an MD Bridge program. Okay. So I was actually studying the University of Toledo. Mm -hmm. I will be going to a Christian university. I'm waiting on acceptance right. here. I won't say what it is yeah, yet. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm waiting on yeah. the acceptance and when I when when I am accepted I will tell you where it <laughs> is. <laughs> but I'm waiting on this sentence. No, that's how you gotta know fine. how to be quiet in your waiting seasons, y'all. Because uh, <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> if you speak too soon, sometimes you can mess up the mm -hmm. shifting Come of on. God. So it's best to keep quiet when God is shifting you in greater seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would tell you this I plan on going, I will be here locally, okay. but I plan to uh, go to school to finish my MD Bridge program to become mm -hmm. a pediatric cardiovascular trauma surgeon. My heart's desire was always to be a doctor since I was three. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to do ministry. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do it uh, from, from, a, from a standpoint of not just that speaking on the word of God. That is ministry. Amen. I love yeah, that. Being the hands and feet. Amen. Being That's the hands right. Of Jesus. Yeah. And, then, and I wanted, I had a desire to want to make sure that people didn't have insurance. When I get my hospitals, I desire to have a hospital of my own. Beautiful. And I, I, God is, I know God's believing in Africa one day. He's been telling mm. me that a lot, me, my husband. Uh, but I would tell you this. I wanted hospitals and doctor's offices that when you come in, you feel the presence of God. We can lay hands before we operate. Ooh. Because if, if the tests come back and say, oh, it's not fair, then, oh, it's not fair. We can't operate on you. You're <laughs> yeah, free to go. Yeah. I wanted that hospital. Wow. <laughs> That's and what I want. children, but you want the pediatric. You yes, ma'am. I want to focus on children, but I want to meet other doctors that know, too, about adults' health so that we can wow. all come together and build the kingdom in a way by a way of health because the problem is we have a sick system yes, not do. a health system we do. and the and the key word in health is heal mm -hmm. so if we're not healing people then they're not becoming healthy absolutely <laughs> we go to a holistic doctor his name is Dr. Zong shout out Dr. Zong Amen. he is a believer and that's one of the things he said the Lord sent him here mm. he's Asian medicine he's holistic but he said the Lord sent him here I him. because America only gets you they don't deal in healing this is true they don't deal in health they deal in keeping you going back to the medication over and this over and true. over so they get you well but Western they don't get medicine. you healed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he said the lord told him to come and to bring healing spiritually mm. and naturally so he does everything holistically you'll have to get his information because he doesn't do anything that's with, awesome that's yeah. deep you say that because part of my journey since you say that i'm gonna go i know god is leading me to oh, say definitely. this go ahead I'm not just going to become an MD. I'm going to become an ND, a naturopathic doctor to weed people off of medication. There you go. That's the, you. There you made me tell myself after that, the, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the and Holy I Spirit. didn't even know that, so that's that was what definitely it, the that's, Lord. That's, but, yeah, that's the we goal, need more you know of that. that. We need more yeah. of that. And it's sad because there's so many people that want that do that or they want to, and there's such a fight against that, mm. you know, to – he got death threats and stuff because – Yes, it's true. Oh, because of oh. the monies in the pharmaceuticals. It's and so, you know, true. no, no uh, judgment if you're listening to you on medication, and we ain't saying that. I'm no, just, definitely not. We're just not. saying take your pills, take your medicine until yes, God tells yes, you not to. yes. Um, 
Um, let me yes. put that disclaimer out there. Absolutely. But um, I do know that he was saying that most of the stuff, I mean, we just get herbs. We just, he does these teas that he That's makes and it's just true. herbal. And like anything you have, he'll just look at you. He'll look mm. at your wrist and your throat. And then he just, Dr. Zong, Plano, uh, baby. Dr. Tony Zong, he's off the chain. I um, <laughs> so that is so awesome. I love hearing how that's going to mm. mesh together. I love to hear what you guys are doing. And it sounds like God is just really giving you vision to do different things. This is true. That sounds very unique, both mm. of your, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that we've had Christian rappers, but the way that you're planning to do it and doing the app, like I believe you're going to, why not have an app that can be on the app store? And I know you have it on the app store, but you know what I'm saying? That Why can't you have a streaming app? Right. Mm. That's full of not just your stuff, but also other Christian artists, and you get paid to stream their stuff. Right. You know, I mean, iPhone, I mean, what is that? Apple does it. Yeah. Spotify does it. That's I true. really believe that's the future. I really believe, um, it is. you know, artists are going to need that mm-hmm. because these streaming rates, they keep going down. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's like, okay, we're going to need our own platform. Yep. We're going to need our own platform. And then I believe, you know, we could be going to a point where they're trying to shut the gospel out. And you're going to need something. If they don't play, want to play you on Apple or Spotify or whatever, exactly. you got to have a place to go. Exactly. So True. just a thought. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so one of the things that I was thinking when I was coming up, and I always pray before I write out my question. So I don't just write them out. They're thought, they're, they, I think them through. Absolutely. And um, I let the Holy Spirit just lead. But one of the things that I thought about you guys is that y'all are young, you're married, and you're in ministry. And I loved hearing your testimony. And that's what I kind of thought just from talking to you guys that y'all been walking with the Lord for mm-hmm. a minute since you were young. I feel like there's a hurdle to young people sticking mm-hmm. and staying with the Lord, you know. And I was gonna, I wanted to just talk to you guys about that. What do you think is the biggest hurdle? for young people staying with the Lord and following him today? Is it just, is it all the distractions? Is it social? You know what I mean? Is it, is it one thing? I feel like oftentimes when I was in the church, I, I've dealt with church hurt. And I, <laughs> I, and the reason I'm going to bring this up because the reason is a reason why some young people stay out of the church. Uh, sometimes we feel like we're not seen by those of the elders or mm-hmm. because of we have a, maybe a greater anointing or greater mantle mm-hmm. on our lives we were asked to go to the background you know and stay there you know because so you, you're going to outshine us and and I remember I was mentioning to you earlier about how people are building a name for themselves but they're not building the name of God mm-hmm. and uh, oftentimes it's easy to get push to the back it's not just the distractions of social media or or you know and other things in life where there's bills and temptations it's also to the elders that come before us that tells that tell us it's not your time yet Mm. but god is saying it's my time i'm like a david i was girl i was thinking the same thing i was like (laughs) david was a he was a kid he was a teen yes he was young that's who i thought about i'm like what if he wouldn't have stepped out? Mm-hmm. He changed a nation. Absolutely. Go ahead. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Maybe That's exactly who I was thinking yeah, about. Absolutely. Go ahead. They, they look as, oh, you're, you're, you're a kid. But, you know, but if, if you really want to be, you know, uh, stick to the textbook, a kid is a baby goat. And God, the one day, going to separate the sheep away from the goats. And mm. I'm a child of God. And you ought to let me do what I need to do <laughs> so that way we can get more goats to convert to sheep. Mm. <laughs> and the problem is the the world we live in goes by world standards yes <laughs> and the kingdom's the opposite it's, n- it's always the opposite absolutely he and said i'll pour my spirit out on all flesh oh, yeah, kind you're of young stuff. people Amen. and so i think that um you, they're, they're, i never even thought about that but like you said when young people have a gifting let's encourage that let's yeah. let's shepherd that let's um you know, mentor that and let's Absolutely. help them in ministry. And like you said, I think sometimes maybe it's because they're not, you know, the people that should be mentoring. What did Paul say? Mm-hmm. Although you are, you should be teachers by now, you're still on milk. Mm. So maybe there's not the people there that are, that are prepared to handle where these, you know, young people are. Cause I was thinking that is a good point. I honestly was thinking like along the lines of like, maybe it's all the distractions. It's everybody telling, and that mm-hmm. is a part of it, but I didn't see it from that perspective. What do you think, Cameron? What would you say? What do you think is, I mean, is What do you think is a big hurdle? I I really think it's a combination of all that. I mean, you have, um, you know, just the signs of the time. Yeah. How things are. The great falling away. uh, Mm -hmm. Right. It talks about that's going to, you know, happen. Mm -hmm. uh, It's happening. Yeah. Yes. Happened. Happened. Yeah. (laughs) Happening. Yeah. Happened. um, Yeah. So if if you're not deeply rooted um, Mm -hmm. in in Christ, 
Thank you. You know, you got to go past the surface. I think mm-hmm. a lot of us uh, mm-hmm. tend to be like a religious practice. Uh, yes. You know, it, it's like it, it's methodical. Yeah. You know, it, it's something that we just do on, it, you know, the, the yes. day, the Sunday. But yes. is it something that we live? Hmm. Or are we practitioners? Come or are we just, on. You know, because um, it makes me think about, you know, my own family. Mm. You know, um, no shade, but it was just like how I grew up. You mm. know, I was just raised like. Church is just something we did on Sundays, but it wasn't really yes. what we lived. And I always yes. had this desire for just oh more truth and, and to go deeper. Because mm. it started with church on Sunday, but it led into, okay, well, let me go to Bible study on Tuesday. Yeah. Too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anything that kind of get me uh, more like versed in the, in the scripture. Yeah. Because there was just so much going on at home, you know. Uh, you know, so things good. that I wanted to kind of. It's like okay, I, I need God. I need God because so good. all this dysfunction going on around me. So like, good. I, I need something to. I know I'm here for a purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like I, I know I've had this calling on my life for a long time. You know what I mean? And you so didn't have and this and this is the reason I'm saying this and like you said, no shade because it was a lot of people and it was a yes. lot of us. Mm-hmm. Right. We had people that didn't know how to recognize that on your life and mm-hmm. be able. That's what I mean to shepherd that and to mentor that and to yes. push you into that God given purpose. Exactly. And so I think that we've got to do it different. Like I have kids now and I'm really like trying to let them see me worship. I really try and let them, you know, we, we pray with them. We try and let us, let them see us in our quiet time. We don't always just want to go into the closet. We like to see, let them see us praising God. Right. Let us see them worship us worshiping so that they know it's not relegated just to Sunday or Wednesday night, but this is what we live. Right. This is who we are. And so I think you're, that's a good point. I think a lot of times, you know, we've, right. We've got to stop the, with the hypocrisy, you right. know what I'm saying? And just, or, and not only just the hypocrisy, I don't want to just even say that, but more so yes. where it's, it's really a lifestyle. It's yes. got to be, like you said, where we're practitioners. It's, you sound right. like my pastor. Y'all need to come visit our church. <laughs> a lifestyle, right. a wow. lifestyle where it's exactly. who we truly are. Them, them apostles mm-hmm. in the Bible, them disciples. Right. Oh, they lived it. Exactly. You knew they had been with Jesus did you have you ever read how they died mm. crucified boiled stoned mm-hmm. i mean yeah. all for the name of christ mm. so you yeah. know the conversion was real right mm. it was nothing to play with and i just think that western culture sometimes you know mm-hmm. we are just so blessed over here you yeah. know that we just kind of can be oh yeah let's we go on sunday. persecution right. yeah right. well let's go on sunday yeah. and get a good mm-hmm. message and yeah. then we go back home mm-hmm. to our five bedroom right. house or whatever you know mm-hmm. exactly. and God is left out the rest of the time. Yeah. I so. think another thing that we experience too is um, growing pains a mm-hmm. lot of times with our family. Sometimes mm-hmm. we can grow in, in different ways. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. everyone has to, you know, everyone's on their own climb on Jacob's ladder, you mm-hmm. know, as referenced in Genesis 28 for context, you know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am, I mean, so we're, we're all going at our own pace, but we all have our own ladder to climb. We all have our own race to run. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, you know, other people that may mature faster or slower mm-hmm, than mm-hmm. others. Yeah. You know, we, we all are on our respective walks, but it, it, they all should lead toward Jesus. That's so good. You know? So that's so good to piggyback yeah. off my husband. You were talking about when you were younger, you know, my brother, prophet Phineas is no shade, but my, my God told me to mention this. My yeah. parents are no longer together. My dad was a pastor for many years. Mm-hmm. He decided to walk away from mm-hmm. his family mm-hmm. He doesn't even like to be called pastor anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, But even though that is the case, I still pray for my father. Mm -hmm. I still pray that he comes back to the kingdom. And I pray one day that he'll wake up to see that I missed so much time. Mm -hmm. Let me make up for the time lost. I still want that relationship with my, with my, with Mm -hmm. my dad. You know, Mm -hmm. I'll say, because the word of God said, call no man, but your father, you know, Mm -hmm. but let me call Mm -hmm. him my dad. But Mm -hmm. you know, but I, I do want that for my dad. And I remember my brother, uh, God rest his soul, when he was walking in the right direction and the church was growing and the measures that it was growing because he was walking as close as he was to God in youth, some of the older people in our church got uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. And my it father happens. was like, I, you know, maybe, you know, you know what I mean? He should like, you know, like, you know, like do, do this, you know, another yeah. time. And yeah. he kept trying to push him aside and the Lord had other plans for Phineas and Phineas mm-hmm. just kept growing. And I realized, and it's like I said, it's no shade to my father because I, I love my dad, mm-hmm. but I have to be real. God tell me to be transparent because somebody needs to hear it. I don't know who needs mm-hmm. to hear this. Um, but because the path, 
my dad was on, he wasn't living it. Because I wanted to bring him. You brought up as my husband mm -hmm. so deep. Uh, because he wasn't living it, he couldn't have him keep preaching and prophesying because he didn't know who he was going to call out next. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the, some of the people in the church house don't want a young and anointed and appointed to get up there and teach and preach in the manner they do mm -hmm. because they don't know what they're going to expose and that their life mm -hmm. will be exposed on the platforms they build for their namesake, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. for God's namesake. So we have to realize is our image more important than being made in the image of God? Wow. <laughs> and that part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That part. That's a big, huge part. We still love our lives too much. Mm. You said it. It's funny. My pastor was just preaching on that Sunday. We wow. still have too much skin in the game. We Thank still Jesus. love our lives too much. It says whoever will lose his life for my sake. We're not, we don't want to lose our lives. We still want to hold on to this, you know? And so it's that, it's that dying, mm -hmm. that Absolutely. dying to self, that dying daily. Mm -hmm. I die daily, you know, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of us just aren't willing to do that. And I think we haven't been taught to do that. Mm -hmm. So when I think of young people and why they're falling away, they haven't been taught to do mm -hmm. that, that there's going to be things you have to give up. There's going to be things, so you know, I had to explain that to my children and it wasn't easy. We don't mm -hmm. do Halloween. We don't do, yeah, we don't either. We don't do even the fall festivals and things like that. I know a lot of people do. We don't do anything. We don't do any bacon holidays. pray on that, that, that day. Mm -hmm. I pr we pray for people that's in, you know, that are participating. We ask God to cover them, you know, in love, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's a that's a thing that hey your God is not your belly we don't just get to choose and do whatever we want to do mm -hmm. I know you want to do this like this and maybe that's you know and so those are the types of sacrifices if you will mm -hmm. which we ain't really no sacrifice but you know mm -hmm. that we have to make and we have to it's die true. and it's not always easy because no, then you're not invited to this or somebody wants you to you know maybe yeah. you're not picked for this yeah, or you're not on the prom for the you know and so those are the things that young people are dealing with having mm -hmm. to be set apart. Mm -hmm. Having to be set apart, and it's hard if you haven't been taught to do that. Absolutely. When it and it hurts, it's hard. It is. Jesus was it's, Jesus was set apart. He was is. denied. He was left alone, mm -hmm. and it was hard for him. Okay, true. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's not mm -hmm. easy. It's not an mm -hmm. easy thing to walk through. But with God, mm -hmm. <laughs> all things are possible, Amen. and we can do it. So that's that's a good point. Um, Anybody want to say something else? I thought you said something. Oh, I was, I, was, I was just saying to God, be glory. Me and my husband, it was difficult for us <coughs> around, like, you know, the holiday season. Our families was like, yeah. you're not coming over for holidays? <laughs> well, the Lord told us to stop, you know, doing uh, these holidays we've always done. And, you know, and, and my mom was like, what? Like, yeah. I was like, yeah, mama, I'm not trying to yeah, make you feel any type of not, way. Yeah. Absolutely. I said, if I have to honor God, really not coming for Christmas? <clears throat> I said, no, mom, God told me. I need you. I need you to go another way. You know, people have been led astray about so many things, and I'm on my way back, and I'm soon to return. I need you to warn everybody. Mm. So that's all I've been doing is warning mm. and living, living by the book, the yeah. Holy Bible, yeah. basic yeah. instructions yeah. before leaving <clears throat> Earth, because. The worst thing we can do is being kingdom is misrepresent what kingdom is and what it does. And we, yes, so I yes. want to make sure whoever knows me, if you don't remember my name, remember that I believed in the Lord thy God. Come on. And I know Jesus came and he's coming back again. That's good. And because of that revelation is true, remember what I did for Christ. And that's mm. all that's going to last. That's all that's going to last because everything else is going to burn up. Amen. <laughs> That's what the word say. That's what the word say. So kind of leading into that. So I, I know my show is for believers, mm -hmm. but I have a lot of people that I know that listen that are new believers. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people that I believe listen that are not saved. Mm -hmm. And so each week I always want to make sure that I'm clear on our mission, our purpose, mm -hmm. what we're here for. And so what about um, for anyone that's maybe a new believer? What if they were? new to following Christ, what would you say, um, how could you encourage them about following Christ with all their heart? I think we kind of said that about yeah. having to know, I think sometimes we don't always explain the gospel well. Mm -hmm. We get people saved and then we just leave them, but we don't mm -hmm. disciple them and we don't explain that this world is not our own. Mm -hmm. There we live in a different kingdom. That's so once true. you become, come to Christ, it, you gonna see things different. Right. You're gonna experience mm -hmm. things different. Mm -hmm. Everything's not gonna be rosy. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says in this world, you will have tribulation, but be a good cheer. I've overcome. But 
people in the word, I mean, they, they were left, they were stoned, they were, they were abused, they were thrown in jail. I mean, we haven't gotten to that level, but it's, it's, it's heading there. We're seeing it. I mean, with the different laws that are being passed and things like that, it is coming where being a Christian is going to be a persecution type thing. And I think people need to understand what it means as a new believer that all things are made new in Christ. You're a new creation. Mm -hmm. Your old life has passed away, but it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. Anything you wanted to add to that? I just wanted to say, you know, whether we're in the world or whether we're in Christ, we're going to suffer. So we might as well suffer for God's sake. Mm. And make it on in the kingdom. Go on. Go on. That's a good one, brother. Go on. Right. God, he doesn't want any fair weather believers, you know. Yeah, everyone wants to to reign with them, but, you know, you got to suffer with them as well. Nobody wants to do that. Come on now. Come on now. That no, so. that's you. Come on. <laughs> that, that's a good word. Come on, Jesus. Okay. Oh, I did not realize, man. I'm having such a good time talking to you guys. I wanted to. Is there something you wanted to add? Because we, we we got a few more minutes, oh, oh, yes. and I need okay. I need Mr. Christian to wrap us on up out of here. Oh, that's right. <laughs> man, okay, so that went I, fast. I would say this. Uh, Matthew 20, 20 and twenty two says, but Jesus answered and said. Ye know not what ye ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I should drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said unto him, we are able. See, people say we're able, but they, they, they forget. They, they say we're able, but then they don't show they're capable. Mm. <laughs> Is that the one where they walked away and they, they couldn't follow him no more? That, it's it's in another scripture like that, but when he told them that, he mm-hmm. they said that's a hard saying. Yeah, it, it is. Absolutely. That's what they said, and they said they turned away. It was like five thousand people, and they turned mm, away, and they said they never followed him again. God. Mm. Me and my husband were just talking about that scripture. It's a, I think it's again in Luke, but it's the same kind of. Go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I'm gonna make sure I don't lose what God told me. No, but sorry, it's okay. Ahead. Don't you worry about Forget that. Me, no, 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 no. Go ahead. But I will say it is what the Lord was showing me. No, it's okay. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want to interrupt or be rude on your platform. <laughs> But uh, but no, no but okay. but uh, but no. As I humbly say, when he said, they said unto him, we are able. A lot of times people say they're able, but they they forget to manifest capability. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, if we don't manifest capability, then we don't know what we're able to do in kingdom. Mm-hmm. So if we really want to be baptized in Christ, we got to die to ourselves. So this is why I would say to the believer coming into Christ, don't really know Christ as well as those who are seasoned. Mm -hmm. I would tell you to give yourself grace. Mm. This race needs grace to run it. Mm -hmm. See, God's grace is sufficient Mm -hmm. and his mercy comes new daily. And and you're not going to be able to experience that until you love yourself and give yourself grace as Christ loved you. So if I was to tell you anything, see, God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. So know that God loves you even while you were yet in your sin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he's pulling you out even while I speak now. Mm-hmm. I, I see a man and a woman of God. God is pulling you out. I even see somebody being put up homosexuality. You're going to come out. And when you come out, God's going to grace you to run and testify your testimony on loud, being proud in Jesus. Mm, well, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you want to do us the honor, Christian? Tell us Absolutely. what Christian, the, the musician, Cameron, tell yes. us what this song is called. Yes, well, um, it, it's a freestyle um, oh, you know, for the end of uh, Microphone Phoenix. You know, I was just kind of spazzing out toward the end. And Microphone Phoenix, you know, it's just, I, I, you know, I emerged from the emotional wreckage. You know, uh, Microphone Phoenix, you know, came to set the stage ablaze, you know. Mm-hmm. But I was baptized in fire. You know, what was refined was my desire. So it's like tried and tested, you mm-hmm. know, many a call if you were selected. Mm-hmm. It's just some of the, you know, I wrote so much. Okay. But. So give us, we have like one minute left. Can you give us a look, just a few bars? Because we ain't going to have a whole, whole time to do the whole song. <laughs> right, we done right. got talking. Go ahead. <laughs> I got you. Um, mm, okay, let's see. Let's see. I'm in my element like authentic, brand new whip. You know what the car scent is. Windows tinted, who that trying to peer into the limo squinting. A Christian, spiritual rather than religious, the least bit legalistic, my own worst critic. Got your, fi- got your favorite rapper crying in the fetal position. A blind man couldn't see no different. A keynote speaker and lyricist, not driven by the dividends. Scammers want me to hit up the Venmo for business. Potential managers, yeah, they want to assist. But all they care about the splits and percentages. Who really there when you intend to make a difference? I got to be able to afford benefits so I could take a trip to the dentist. 
Needing to raise 12 an hour ain't a sustainable wage. These are the last days. Looking for pathways. Whether I live or die, do I even have a say? Could I have a choice by using my own voice? I'm looking to get paid from doing what I enjoy. Woo! <laughs> hey, and on that note, <laughs> we gonna roll out of here. You gotta teach me how to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Focus with Angela Duncan next week at 7 o'clock. We'll have another great great guest. Tune in live on the stream. Thank you guys so much for being here and for sharing your hearts. Awesome. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you.